Hi everyone, it's Friday afternoon and I wanted to do something that I've been meaning to do for a little while, which is review the current capabilities of modern robot vacuum cleaners. So robot vacuum cleaners are one of the only really widespread consumer uses of robots so far. There have been many tens of millions of robot vacuum cleaners sold uh, around the world and they've been around for a little while, for, for probably at least a decade. Uh, I've had experiences with some of the early models using them uh, over the years, both the dumb models which just randomly uh, move around your house and also some of the early and now more recent LiDAR mapping based models. I wanted to talk a little bit about my experience with using them in 2024, uh, especially from the perspective of someone who is in robotics and especially from the perspective of someone who works in mapping and positioning systems for robots and autonomous systems, which of course is one of the integral components of what makes a robot vacuum cleaner work. This isn't a product review. I am not endorsing the company that makes the robot that I'm going to describe. You'll probably be able to work out what robot model it is from the video, but I'm not going to explicitly say it. Um, a few things that I'm not really covering in this video, uh, I don't know exactly uh, how long these robot vacuum cleaners will work in terms of battery lives. I've only had the current model for five months and I just bought another one. I also don't know whether the company will institute sort of lockout rules with consumables, forcing you to buy consumables. So far that hasn't been my experience, but again, these things can always change. And finally, people have varying concerns around data privacy. Again, this would be something you'd wanna work out yourself as is the case with any electronic product that's connected to the cloud. All right, so let's get into the review. The vacuum cleaner itself is a fairly standard form factor. It's fairly small, fairly light, it's circular. It has two brushes on the underside, a battery and a dust compartment, which can also serve as a mopping compartment. And you can upgrade the dust compartment to a larger compartment. You can also get an auto emptying station. I don't have one of those, uh, but the idea there is you don't have to empty the bin from the robot vacuum cleaner manually. Instead, it empties itself into the docking station and less frequently you empty the docking station. My experience in setting it up was really easy. You unwrapped the box, uh, put it in your home, found a charging spot to put the charger, connected it to the Wi-Fi, and then it was off and running, uh, mapping the initial environment. The robot does an initial mapping phase. It explores the environment fairly rapidly, uses its LiDAR sensor to create an occupancy grid map of the environment. That map is then segmented automatically into varying areas. Often these correspond to rooms, uh, but not always. And then if you do nothing else, it will commence its cleaning cycle where it cleans each of these rooms or areas one by one. Its cleaning process appears to be one of skirting the outer boundaries of each of the areas, presumably to get dust off the walls. And then it does a lawnmower type pattern where it goes back and forth and tries to cover the area. If the area is a bit messy, there's objects or chair legs, it will use circular patterns and other unorthodox movement patterns in order to cover the complete area. And once it thinks it's done the area, it will move on to the next one. It's been able to do a fairly large floor of my house in one go. It does theoretically have a recharge and resume function where it will go back to the dock, charge up a little bit more and then come back and finish it off. There's an app where you can see the mapping process. You can see it uh, mapping the environment and then you can see where it thinks it's cleaned. It has a white line that traces out on the map showing you where it's been. You can also set zones on the map where you don't want it to go. For example, if you've got a nice rug that you don't want it to thin out too much, you can tell it to avoid that rug region. For the mopping function, which I don't really use at all, this would presumably be useful to stop your wet mop from going over carpeted or rug areas as well. The system has been pretty reliable. I've had it for about five months operating on a near daily basis and I've just bought a second one for downstairs. Uh, it has maybe a failure rate in terms of the map being corrupted or getting stuck on cords. For me, about once a fortnight, I think we'd have to intervene, maybe a little less than that, which is much, much better than any of my past robot vacuum cleaners. And 
it doesn't require a huge amount, at least in my house, of preparation. You do need to make sure some of the more obvious hazards are out of the way, but it doesn't feel like you're spending hours getting the house ready for the robot vacuum cleaner to work. Some of the map corruption modes are fairly typical for those who've worked in uh, SLAM or robot mapping systems. It can have an aliased or duplicate version of the map superimposed on the original one and not be able to resolve or reconcile these two duplicate maps with each other to consolidate them into a single map. Uh, and that can cause problems. This is fairly easily solved by just remapping the floor. So it takes a little bit of extra time and a little bit of intervention. In terms of coverage, it seems to do a pretty good job. You can see in some of the slow motion, sorry, sped up uh, time lapses that I've taken of various rooms. You can see it doing that initial outer perimeter tour before it then does the lawnmower pattern back and forth over the exposed areas. It's able to get underneath most things like most of these robot vacuum cleaners, cleaning underneath tables, uh, chairs. It can get stuck in roller chair legs, it seems to be able to get into them but not extract itself from them. Having done this with mobile robots myself in my research, this is an incredibly difficult problem to solve in the general sense unless you make your robot paranoid in a way that it never goes near these chairs. Its docking function seems pretty good. Once it's finished or once it runs out of charge, it will go from where it currently is located to where the docking station is. It seems to be able to pretty reliably find its docking station as, where, as long as you give it a little bit of space around it. Um, and I've seen it navigate fairly reliably across multiple rooms and down corridors uh, to get to the docking station. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to approach and readjust its approach to the station, but I haven't really seen any docking failures so far. I got this platform, both of these platforms for around $200, a little bit over $200 on special. This is Australian dollars. I think the retail price of these are around $550. I would be very surprised uh, whether the company is making huge amounts of profit selling a unit uh, like this at a price point of just over 200 Australian dollars on sale where it regularly is on sale. Maybe they are using the data or selling your data, maybe they are planning to recoup it with future products as they gain market share. Maybe they're gonna earn more of their money through a future subscription service, paid subscription service, or perhaps through the consumables that you may choose to buy for the platform. Either way, as a roboticist who's worked in the field for a couple of decades, the reliability and capability of such a cheap, such a compact system is really, really impressive. And even though robot vacuum cleaners aren't really the most exciting of robot technologies that we see or hear about nowadays, it is interesting to note that they do seem to continue to get uh, cheaper and uh, if not more capable, more capable at a certain price point. Anyway, that's my very informal, very incomplete account of what a roboticist thinks of a robot vacuum cleaner in 2024. I know from talking to lots of other people that their experiences uh, vary. I know for me with a full house with a dog, uh, the robot vacuum cleaner actually does genuinely save us some time on a weekly basis. And so in that respect, whether it's a cool robot or not, it's a technology that is mostly upside and not too much downside in terms of our day-to-day -day lives.